What's up guys? Uh, better late than never on this breakdown, but let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, main event tonight, we got Charles Oliveira defending his title against Dustin Poirier. Um, as of right now, Dustin is the betting favorite, despite him saying that he's the uh, been the underdog his whole life. So he is the betting favorite. And uh, we're about to jump right into this, this breakdown. Um, when people think of Charles Oliveira and Conor McGregor, they obviously don't think that they're very similar at all. But uh, I think they're actually very similar, at least in the way they strike. So it's right out the gates of the, the trilogy, Conor marches straight to the center of the octagon, throws a spinning sidekick, backs Dustin up, and does it again. High pressure, and then immediately starts going to the leg of Dustin. Now, Charles is a big spin. He loves spinning kicks. He loves pressuring with leg kicks. Um, and Dustin has a really bad tendency of not checking leg kicks at all. He just eats them. And uh, this is actually something that he does a very good job adjusting to is these push kicks. Another one of Charles Oliveira's main weapons, okay? Uh, that's a big thing that he likes to do. All right, good setup. Connor faked that left, faked the, the push kick again, throws the left, and goes right back to his spinning attacks. Now, at this point in the fight, it's only 30 seconds in, and Dustin's about had it with eating these lay kicks, so he decides he's going to fire back. He tries to grab the kick and counter. Connor's able to control distance. He's going to slip right out of this big, looping left hand. But uh, as you'll see as the fight progresses, Dustin actually does a really good job of finding his range in these blitzes. And here's something that's a big factor in this fight, I believe. So he's getting eaten up with these teep kicks, but he's gonna, he outsteps to his right, blocks with his shins, and he takes, not his shins, his elbows, and he avoids the damage from this push kick. And then it looks like he's actually hit from here, but Dustin shows great defense and he slips the one two okay dustin does a really good job except for leg kicks about not getting hit by the same thing over and over again so let this play a little bit and that's what that's what we're looking at that's the video play by play now dustin immediately he starts going to the calf okay now connor he doesn't really throw calf kicks uh he's more of a, a traditional leg kicker uh charles will throw the calf um He's not so much prone to that, but setting kicks naked on Dustin is a bad idea because you see here, a naked kick results in a cross. Beautiful, actually beautiful uh, one-two from Connor there. Um, he actually, Dustin fakes his jab, and what Connor does is he commits to a jab and throws the cross right over it, and he lands him. Beautiful, beautiful boxing. Um, gets back in the center range. Now, I think the difference between these two is that um, Charles is not so much boxing heavy, even though he does have, I think he has better defensive boxing than Connor. But uh, beautiful, throws another naked strike. Dustin slips, rips. And here's, here's something nice, though. This check hook, Connor sees it coming, and he blocks with this, this hand, okay? I think that's a big thing. Because Charles doesn't throw, when he throws a strike, or he throws a strike, he doesn't drop his hands on the exit. So these big looping counter hooks aren't going to be as effective. Pressure starts getting to Connor, though. He's going to start to try to go back to the leg, which is not a great idea. He goes back to this leg naked in close quarters, too, after knowing that Dustin's got that experience with Justin Gaethje. He blasts him with the straight. Yep, right here. And what he's going to do is he's actually going to do something that has me worried about him, okay? He's, he After another blitz, he sees that Connor's in trouble and he throws this big looping left, okay? Now, before that, he does something that actually makes me feel a little bit more confident. You see, he throws this uppercut. But the issue that I have with these blitzes that Justin likes to do is he doesn't... Uh, He's, he, Connor wasn't even looking for a takedown, but he had one if he wanted one, okay? That's not good with Charles. This is a scenario that I don't foresee happening with Charles just because I don't, I don't see Dustin trying to roll the dice. Um, I don't see this scenario happening the way it happened in this fight. Um, if Charles does get this guillotine, though, it's, it's not a good – it's probably going to be the end of the fight. I think this is what's just going to happen. If there's an ever-ground situation, he's going to try and get up and create space, you know? 
but um, take a sip of my drink. So my big takeaways from this is Dustin, he, the more I, I watch this, this, this fight, the less confident I am in picking Dustin. Um, just the way they stack together, I, I think the long range striking goes to Charles. I think the grappling goes to Charles. Um, wrestling, I'm going to have to go to Charles. But inside boxing, I'm definitely going to give it to Dustin. And even though I'm not someone who's sold on this whole Charles Oliveira has no heart and he's a quitter, um, I don't think he is really ever a quitter. Uh, I think we've seen him quit due to fatigue and being hurt. Um, but I honestly, in the Kevin Lee fight, there's a moment that I think a lot of people overlook in the second round. Um, Kevin gets a big slam on, on Charles. And it looks like Charles actually dislocates his shoulder. And you can see he just starts trying to jiggle his shoulder. And he, he just kind of bites his time. But he's able to play defensively. And before, in those kind of situations, it, I think it'd be more prone to see Charles lose from there. But like I said, he just kind of sucks it up, deals with it, and he, he conquers and goes to finish the rest of the fight. And eventually finish Kevin. But that being said, and on the same breath, I do think the biggest X factor here is Dustin's griminess, really. Um, Charles is going to look to make the fight very pretty. And uh, like I said previously, I think his experience with that last Conor McGregor fight actually helps him a lot. Because people, like I said, people don't think that Conor and, and Charles strike very similar. And essentially, they're, they're, there's a lot of big differences. But the kicking game and the pressure is something that Charles has really adapted with his new coach. I want to say Rafael Cordero. No, it's uh, Diego Lima, I think. Uh, either way, um, he's changed his, his striking. Now, the one thing that I say is different, I said previous, is Charles is, I think, more defensively responsible when it comes to uh, his boxing. But obviously, the power is a little bit different. And I think... In the rematch with, not the rematch, the trilogy with Connor, Dustin was a little bit more tentative in the boxing exchanges just because of Connor's power. Um, I don't think Dustin's going to be as concerned with the power that Charles has, even though people kind of made a, a big deal about his knockout with Michael Chandler. But that wasn't so much of just like power. I think that was more of like perfect timing and perfect punch placement on, uh, on that finish. Um, I want to say the biggest things to look out for if you're a Dustin fan is him over committing to the, those blitzing, switching combinations. Um, in the past, he's actually shown a pretty good uh, way to counter wrestling is he'll do those blitzes into a knee or he'll do those blitzes into an uppercut. But if he hurts Charles and he, he gets overzealous and he steps in with those long switch stancing combinations and Charles gets them down... That's not good. Uh, that's, a, that's a sure way to lose. Um, really, I, I see the fight going pretty... If I was to say anything, I think in the first round or so, Charles Oliveira has the highest chance of finishing Dustin. Dustin's grit and determination, though, I think will really pay off. So if we're going to see a finish on Dustin's side, I'd say maybe into the third going on to the championship rounds. Um, like I said, I think Charles is much more dangerous in the first two rounds, which is kind of also similar in a sense to the Conor McGregor fight. Uh, I hate to try and keep comparing the two, but, um, but they do have their similarities. Um, I'm just going to have to go and say for my official pick, um, I'm going to have to go with Dustin just off grit i don't think it's going to be a decision i wouldn't if i had to if you put a gun to my head and say pick a pick how he's going to win i will probably go dustin by fourth round tko it's t entirely possible to hurt charles and guillotine him he's been susceptible to it before i just don't see that likely happening um but like i said this is a, a risky game this is a risky game that he's playing and charles is the rightful champion so 
excited to see. Like, subscribe, and share. Thank you, guys.